that? In love and in grace. Back here, we had to go through Israel. But God sets Israel aside because of her rebellion and disbelief in him. Now there's no hope for the world, for us. But God loved us and moved in grace. And he raises up a new apostle by Paul. And Paul says, God's given me the revelation of this mystery. He's given me the gospel of the grace of God. How that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again. And what Christ did and accomplished, the necessary things to save us, it is finished. It's been done. All you need to do is believe that now. That's what God did for us. Paul says, listen, today, you don't have to go through Israel. Today, you just cry out to God and he'll hear you today. Isn't that something? What a privilege to remember we no longer have to deal like they did in the past, but now we deal with this completely different today. Now it's whosoever will. That's God's cry and call. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says this here. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believed not less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto you. Verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He said, listen, I want you to know something, Paul says. God has revealed a new light. He's revealed a new way to come to him. No longer do you have to go through Israel. Now you can just come yourself if you come by faith and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That light has shined, Paul says. And he says, here it is, 1 Corinthians 15 for I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Romans 10, 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart means you mean it. Man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Ephesians 2.13 says this, But now in Christ, but now, the same context, now today, not like it used to be, now today, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 19 now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God. An unbelievable change has taken place, not only in God's dealings, but also in this period of time when God one day back there touched your heart and he saved you and forgave you of all your sins. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen? Once we were far off, but now we're in God's family. Once we were condemned in sin, now we're justified. That means we have a right standing before Almighty God. Once we were without Christ, but now Christ lives in us. Once we were without hope, but now we're looking for that blessed hope. Once we were without God and country, but now our citizenship is in heaven. Once we were without covenants and promise, but now we have exceeding great and precious promises. Once we were without inheritance, but now we're joint heirs with Christ. Once we were without spiritual life, but now God's made us alive spiritually. Once we were without God, but now he's our ever-present Abba Father. Amen? Amen? And so now, as a believer, there was a time I experienced this, this, this wonderful thing when I put my faith in this glorious gospel. 
and God saved me. Now, when I'm having difficulties that come into my life, I have a father who's ever present with me. Now, when we lose a loved one, when our marriage is on the rocks, when our kids are in trouble, our God will be with us. When we have financial needs, when the temptations and trials are exploding, our God is with us. <laughs> when all seems hopeless, when there are so many against us, even forsaken us, our God is for us. And when we even face death ourselves, our God will be there with us. Paul summed it all up when he said this in 2 Timothy 4. At my first answer, no man stood with me. He's all by himself. All the people he'd ministered to him. Nobody's there. But all men forsook me. I pray, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, what? The Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me into his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul was saying, listen, regardless of what man does, regardless of what you're going through, God will be there for you. Amen. And he'll be there for you in everything that you have to go through. Once we were deserving hell-bound sinners, but now... We're heaven-bound saints. What a blessing it is to remember where we came from and what God has done for us. I believe the big trouble today is the reason people don't have present fire, the word they don't have present for vision for the future. Remember all those things before we were saved. What great deliverance I God did for them. We were controlled by I that our my being heart. dead. We Ephesians were controlled by the, uh, the, the world, the flesh, the devil, our sinful nature and all of that. But we've been set free from all of that. I remember an old time preacher. He was going around the church building. He saw a young boy. A young boy had an old bird cage. He had several just little old yard birds in it that he, he had gotten. And the preacher said, what you got there? He said, oh, some old birds. And he said, they don't sing much. And uh, the preacher says, well, wh what are you going to do with them? He said, well, I'm going to go home. I'm going to play with them, have a little fun. The preacher said, then what are you going to do with them? He said, well, I'll probably feed them to my old tomcat. <laughs> the preacher said, you know, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll buy those for $3. The boy says, sold. <laughs> he gave him the cage with the birds in. Preacher went around and he opened that cage up and he set him free. And he told his congregation about that. And he said, Do you know that when I set him free, those birds he said wouldn't sing? Do you know what they were doing? They were just singing as clear as could be. He said, It sort of sounded like, Redeem, redeem. I have been redeemed. <laughs> Amen. And I want you to know something. You and I, Satan had us in a cage of sin. And we had no hope. But then one day, Jesus Christ, when we put our faith in him, opened that cage's door and he set us free. And we've been redeemed. That means he paid the price to set us free so as never to return. That's called redeemed. And that's ours. And you that are here today, and you're without God, don't live another day, another moment without God. The day just come. He's made it possible today for you to come and say, God, I'm a sinner. But I do believe your son died for my sins. And he rose again. And I'm putting my faith in him and his work to save me. And I'll tell you what, when you walk out of here, you'll not be without God forever. Huh? He'll be with you every step of the way. But also for you that are his children. There's been a time you were truly saved. It's time for you to remember what God saved you from and where God saved you from. 
Do you understand? He saved you from the pits of your life of sin, but also no longer he saved you from the past and gave you this privilege for today. He's done an unbelievable thing when he saved us. Now you would say to me, well, pastor, I, I believe that. Are you living for God then? I mean, if I truly believe that, there's nothing left in my life except him. He's first. He's priority. He's preeminent. First love. Huh? Romans 12, 1 says this here. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Just leave that verse up there, if you would. Is it reasonable? Look at what he saved us from. And my question is this here. Why does the great apostle Paul, through the word of God that God gave him, have to beg God's children to give him their all? That's what that word beseech means. I'm, I beg you. And a preacher should never have to get up here and beg you to go all out for God. Not after what God's done for you. Huh? We ought to be the first ones lining up and saying, Oh, God, I'm here. I'm here to worship you. I'm here to praise you. I'm here to surrender. I'm here to give you my all. I'm here to be obedient to what your word tells me to do. Not because I have to, but I want to because I love you. I know what I was when you saved me. And I understand better now that you saved me from this past. And so God, here I am. Father, we just pray right now that you would move on our hearts. Do something that only you can do. Just pray that your spirit would move through this sanctuary this morning and touch the hearts not only of lost people but of saved people god help us never ever get over of being saved what it took who did it and why and it's ours in jesus name and everybody said